Welcome to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on line plots, also known as dot plots. But before you begin this lesson, you should make sure that you're comfortable with number lines and with putting numbers in order from least to greatest. So make sure you know those and let's get started. So what exactly is a line plot? A line plot is a method for recording data by placing X's or dots on top of each data value. For example, Let's say that we have data on the number of books sold daily. And here's our data. So on one day, two books were sold. On another day, zero books were sold. Then the next day, three books were sold, and so on. But before we start looking into our data, we should put it in order from least to greatest. This has a whole bunch of benefits, like trying to find the median, or trying to find the lowest value, or the highest value, or finding the range of the set of data. So it's a really good idea to always put your data in order from least to greatest. When we do that, we end up with this. Now, I want to make sure you don't fall for this common math pitfall. Whenever students are ordering numbers from least to greatest, they tend to leave out a number or write an extra number. You need to make sure you're very careful. So in order to make sure this doesn't happen, we should always count the number of the data items before and after ordering them. So let's count the number of items here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So before we ordered our data, we have 11 data items. So down here, we should also have 11. Let's check it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this also has 11 items. So that means that we didn't leave anything out and we didn't repeat a number. That's something that happens a lot. Please be careful. You don't want to make such a small mistake. Now for the step-by-step -step process. Here's our data for the number of books sold daily in order from least to greatest. Step one, place the title. We're talking about the number of books sold daily, so we'll just put our title here. Step two, put the number line and the label. So we'll put a number line down here and then we're going to put a label that will represent what each X or dot is going to represent. So we're talking about the number of books sold daily. So this will just be the number of books. Step three, place the low value. So we're going to put the lowest value in our data set on the number line on this end. And what's the lowest number in our set of data? Well, since we have it ordered from least to greatest, we just have to look at this end here. Our lowest number is zero. So we'll put that on our number line. Step four, place the numbers to the highest. Since we have our numbers in order from least to greatest, we know that our greatest or highest number is four. So on our number line, we're gonna write the numbers from zero going all the way to four. Step five, we're gonna put X's on each of the values accordingly. So let's start from our zero. How many zeros are in our set of data? One, two. So here on the zero, I'm gonna put two X's to represent those zeros, one, two. This means there were two days where zero books were sold. Let's go to one. On how many days was only one book sold? One, two, three. So I'm gonna put three X's over the one, one, two, three. And again, that means there were three days where only one book was sold. How about two books? On how many days were only two books sold? One, two, three. So I'll put three X's here. One, two, three. How about three books? On how many days were only three books sold? One, two. So I'll put two X's here. One, two. And last but not least, four. Well, on how many days were four books sold? Since there's only one four in our set of data, we'll put one X on top of the four. And again, that means that there was only one day where four books were sold. Here's the next example. And for this example, we're gonna make a line plot, but instead of using X's like our last example, we're gonna use dot this time. So here we have a set of data. And this data tells us the number of miles driven to work by employees. And as we look at the data, we'll see the numbers aren't in order. So the first thing we should do is put them in order from least to greatest. And when we do, they'll look like this.
And now we'll follow the step-by-step -step process. Step one, place the title. And that's pretty straightforward because they gave it to us right here. So since that's our title, we'll just put it at the top of our line plot. Miles driven to work by employees. Step two, put number line and label. So our number line is gonna go down here, just a line from one end to the other. And then we'll write our label, which is pretty straightforward. Since we're talking about miles driven, each of these numbers is the number of miles. So we'll label it as miles. Step three, place the low value. And this is exactly why putting the numbers in order from least to greatest is so super cool. Because all we have to do is look at this end. Our lowest value is three. So we'll put that at this end of our line plot. Step four, place numbers to the highest. Our numbers range from three as our lowest all the way to 10 as our highest. Since 10 is our highest value, we're gonna go from three all the way to 10. Step five, plot dots on values. So let's start here at three. How many threes do you see in our data? One, two. So we'll put two dots. And again, this means there were two employees that drove three miles to work. Now let's go to four. How many fours do you see in our data? One, two, three, four. So we'll put four dots here. One two, three, four. So there were four employees that drove four miles to work. How about five? Well, we've got one, two, three fives. So we'll put three dots. One, two, three. And this means there are three employees that drive five miles to work. How about six? How many sixes are there in our data? One, two. So we'll put two dots on top of six. And this means there are two employees that drive six miles to work. How about seven? Well, there's one seven in our data, so we'll put one dot on the seven. And that means there's only one employee that drives seven miles to work. How about eight? There's no eight in our data, so we just won't put any dots. And because it's blank here, that just means nobody drives eight miles to work. How about nine? Same exact thing. There's no nines in our data. Since there's no nines, we'll leave this blank. Nobody drives nine miles to work. And 10. How many 10s do you see in our data? One, which means I'll have one dot on top of 10. And this means only one employee drives 10 miles to work. He lives the farthest. And more important than just using the step-by-step -step process and making a line plot is actually using the line plot to answer questions. So let's give that a shot. How many employees drive less than five miles to work? Well, here's the five. This is the number of employees that drove five miles to work, right? And we're looking for the number of employees that drove less than five miles to work. Since we're looking for the number of employees that drove less than five miles to work, we're looking for everything here that's less than five. That means this data over here. So how many employees drove less than five miles? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there were six employees that drove less than five miles to work. Most of the employees drive how many miles to work? Well, which value here do you see has the most data? Definitely not 10, that's only one dot. And that means only one employee. Well, which value has the most dots? Well, if we're looking for the most dots, that means it would be four. That's how many miles most employees drove. How many people drive more than seven miles? Well, here's seven miles, but we're not talking about seven miles. We're talking about more than seven miles. So we're looking at all the miles that are more than seven. That's this data over here. How many employees drive more than seven miles? Only one. So we would say one person. Here's another example. For this one, we're gonna make a line plot using X's. 
Here's another set of data. And this data is telling us about the ages of students. But the numbers aren't in order. So the very first thing we should do is put them in order from least to greatest. And when we do that, it'll look like this. Then we'll just follow the step-by-step -step process. Step one, place the title. That's pretty simple. It's right here. So we'll put it over our line plot, ages of students. Step two, put number line and label. We'll draw a number line. And underneath that, we're gonna put a label for what each of the X's will represent. Well, our data talks about ages of students. So we'll just write ages. Step three, place the low value. And since our data is organized from least to greatest, we just have to look at this end for our low value. Our lowest value is 10, so we'll write it here on our number line. Step four, place the numbers to the highest. Well, our highest number is 13. And since our highest number is 13, we're gonna make that happen on our number line as well. We're gonna go from 10 all the way to 13. Step five, plot X's on values. Let's start at 10. How many students are 10 years old? One, two. So we'll write two X's over the 10. One, two. How many students are 11 years old? Just one, so we'll put one X over 11. How many students are 12 years old? One, two, three. So we'll put three X's over our 12. One, two, three. How many students are 13? One, two. So we'll put two X's over our 13. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. Hit the pause button and when you're done, unpause the video and followed by a three, two, one countdown, your answers will be displayed. Ready, set, go. So let's take a look at our answers. For number one, we had to look at our line plot and determine what the data set for this line plot would look like. So our data set for this line plot would look like this. And here's why. I have one X on 20. That means I'll have 120. I have three X's on 21. So I have three 21's. I've got two X's on 22. So I'll have two 22's. 2x's on 23, so that's 2 23's. 3x's on 24, so I'll have 3 24's, 1, 2, 3. And 4x's on 25, so I'll have 4 25's, 1, 2, 3, 4. And each of these numbers represent the number of minutes spent on the phone per week. So one week, this person might have spent 20 minutes on the phone. Another week, they might have spent 24 minutes on the phone. Another week they might have spent 21 minutes on the phone, and so on and so forth. For numbers two and three, we're gonna to need to check that out on the next page. So for question two, we were talking about the characters and passwords for students. Now here's our data. And the first thing we should always do is put our data in order from least to greatest. And it'll look like this. And then we'll just follow our step-by-step -step process. Step one, place the title. Since they gave us our title here, that's pretty easy. We'll just put it at the top. Characters and passwords for students. Step two, put a number line and label. So we'll put our number line and then our label. Since we're talking about characters and passwords, we'll just write characters here. And in case you don't know, a character is a number, letter, or symbol that you can use when you're typing a password on the computer. Step three, place our low value. What's our lowest value here? That's pretty easy to find since we have our numbers in order from least to greatest. Our low number is four. So we'll put that on this end of the number line. Step four, place numbers to highest. Our numbers go from four to our highest, which is seven. So we're gonna make that happen on our number line as well. We'll write four, five, six, and seven. And then finally, step five is to plot dots on our values. Remember, sometimes we use X's, either way is fine. Make sure you follow your instructions so you know which one you're supposed to put. Here, it's dots. So how many fours do we have in our data? 
Well, we have one. So we'll put one dot. How many fives in our data? We have one, two, three, four. So we'll put four dots on our five. How many sixes do we have? One, two, three. So we'll put three dots on six. And how many sevens do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five. So we'll put five dots on our seven. Question three, boxes of candy sold per person. So each of these numbers represents a person and the number itself represents the number of boxes of candy that person sold. So here, this person sold 23 boxes of candy. This person over here sold 27 boxes of candy and so on and so forth. But before we make our line plot, the very first thing we should do is put our numbers in order from least to greatest. When we do it, it'll look like this. And then we'll just follow our step-by-step -step process. Step one, place the title. Well, that's pretty easy because our title's right here. We'll just put it at the top of our line plot. So this is boxes of candy sold per person. Step two, put number line and label. So we'll put our number line across the bottom and then we'll label it. We're talking about boxes of candy, so I'll write exactly that, boxes of candy. Step three, place the low value. What's the lowest value we have here? 22. So we'll put that at this end of the number line. Step four, place numbers to the highest. What's our highest number here? Well, that's 28. So we're gonna write from 22 all the way to 28 across our number line. And step five, plot X's on values. Each of these numbers represents a different person and the number itself represents how many boxes of candy that person sold. So how many people sold 22 boxes of candy? One, so I'll put one X on 22. How many people sold 23 boxes of candy? Only one, so I'll put one X on 23. How many people sold 24 boxes of candy? One, two, so I'll put two X's on 24. How many people sold 25 boxes of candy? Only one, so I'll put one X on top of 25. How many people sold 26 boxes of candy? Only one, so we'll put one X on top of 26. How many people sold 27 boxes of candy? One, two. So we'll put two X's on 27. And how many people sold 28 boxes of candy? Only one, so we'll put one X on 28. So what did we learn from this lesson? A method for representing data on a number line is called a line plot. Line plots can use blank or blank to represent data. They can use X's or they can use dots. Before plotting values on a line plot, you should always put your data in order from least to greatest. How many steps are there when creating a line plot? We use a process that had five steps. Step one is to place the title. Step two is to place the number line and label. Step three is to place the lowest value. Step four is to place values to the highest. And step five is to plot dots or X's on values. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.